On today's show, we're going to learn all about the brand new Epifan Pearl Mini. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph, talking about photography, video, live streaming, and all things related every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Did I say that already? I don't remember. But if I didn't, then I just did. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, do the subscribe thing, hit the bell, you know the routine. Make sure that you get to find out about the show, not only when we go live, but also when we upload our show later in the day at 3 p.m. And if you can be here live, then that's super awesome because then you get to participate in the live chat like this over here. It is fantastic and yes, burns squirrel, no doubt about it. And see, if you were here for the live show, you would know what that was all about. So we're talking about the brand new Epifan Video Pearl Mini. Now, a little bit of background here. Epifan makes a whole bunch of video encoding, uh, live streaming, camera-ish related equipment. And it's, uh, in general, the stuff they make is kind of awesome. It really is. It's really awesome. And, uh, and the, the live streaming hardware that they've had to date, that was their higher end unit, was called the Pearl 2. And the Pearl 2 is insane. Very, very powerful, very good quality, streams 4K, all these inputs. It's an incredible box. We've talked about it on the show many times. We'll link to a whole playlist full of shows up here if you're interested in really high-end streaming and coding. But this is the Pearl 2's baby brother. It is called the Pearl Mini. And we did an unboxing of the Pearl Mini when it came in a couple of weeks ago. If you want to get the whole like, exploration of everything that's in there, what's in the box, we'll link to that up here as well. So we got, uh, we got that show already in the can. But today we're talking about how to set this up and how to configure it and show you exactly what it can do. Now, this is a a big box. There's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going to go into every single detail today because that would literally take hours to do. I am going to go into the, the initial setup, how you get this thing up and running, and basically how you can build a show and start streaming. If, it wasn't, if I wasn't babbling the whole time, you could get up on the air within a couple of minutes of taking this thing out of, box, out of the box. You really could. It's, it's that straightforward. Now, the interface to do this is, you'll see, it's very, it's very thorough. It is user-friendly in the sense that it's all clear in what it is, but it's not big, pretty buttons. It is essentially an all-text interface uh, in an HTML page, which means it's super lightweight, it's super fast and efficient, uh, but it's, um, you know, it could be prettier, let's say. It could be prettier if you're looking for a pretty type of interface. But if you don't care about pretty, then this thing's kind of awesome. So let's, uh, let's start with a tour of a quick tour of the box itself. So let's take a look at the back of it. This is, a, well, actually even the overhead. This is the Pearl Mini right here. We have a touchscreen interface on here. I've done a complete reset on it so that we are looking at a fresh out of the box experience. And if you look at the back of this, you can see all the ports that we've got. So let's just run through this really quickly so you know exactly what is in here, what's in store. Uh, power, power cable, power button right there, pretty obvious. There are two USB ports on here. Now I had, when I did the first unboxing, said that you could plug a USB webcam into that. I was wrong. Epifan told me, eh, eh, can't do that. On the Pearl, Two, the big one you can. The Pro Mini, it's not for USB webcams. It is for connecting external hard drives or for connecting a USB modem. You can tether if you have a, a USB, uh, you know, an LTE stick, one of those. Or apparently, I haven't tried it yet, but apparently you could even connect your phone. So if you have a tethering plan on your iPhone or your tablet, you could USB to the Lightning on your phone and connect that and then connect to the internet that way. So you don't need to have uh, a hardline Ethernet connection to stream, you can use a cellular connection that way, which is pretty cool. Uh, see, next to that, you've got our, where's our, I'm pointing backwards here, it's hard to find these things. There's the Ethernet port that we're running off of Ethernet right now. There's an SDI input there. Let's rack the focus to the back here so we can see the uh, back of this a little bit better. Where's the focus ring? There, wrong way. There we go. Um, you got two HDMI inputs. You have an analog, just a red, white input, your know, standard um, RCA inputs. You can see back there, there's a tiny little mini jack input. That's audio only, of course. And then XLR slash TRS ports for inputs. So you have all of those options for inputs there. So lots of different input options on there. You can bring in up to three different video channels. So did I skip the HDMIs? I think I did. Two HDMIs. Let's go back to that. Two, I don't think I skipped that. So you got SDI for video and two HDMI for video. So those are your three video inputs that you can bring in and then all the audio. The cool thing about the video inputs, and this is one of the things that makes this box worth what it costs, and we're gonna bring that up in just a moment here, is that you can bring in any resolution, any is probably a bit extreme, but you can bring in mixed resolution. So let's say that you've got a camera that's running 1080p 30, just a standard you know, 29.97 frame per second 1080p camera. And then you wanna hook up your computer, which is gonna actually sync at 30p, not 29.97. Or you're going to hook up an iPad, which is going to sync at 60p, 59.94 is what the iPad is going to connect to. 
uh, or you're bringing in some projector, some uh, like a, a document camera, something that's got some weird, who the heck knows what kind of output it's doing. It'll sync all of those. And I, I point this out because the switching system that I use to run the show in here, which is robust, everything has to be synced at the exact same frame size and frame rate. So I have, I have standardized my show, what you're looking at now, I've standardized this on 1080p 24. It has to be exactly 24 frames per second. It can't be 23 and 8. It has to be exactly 24.00 frames per second, which is a challenge, which means that anytime I want to bring in a device that does not sync at that, I have to buy a scaler. Scalers are a few hundred bucks at least. So this is the fact that you can bring in all these different inputs scaled on here at once in itself is pretty awesome. So I just wanted to point that out from the beginning. And we are going to do that. We are going to be mixing and matching as we set up today. But I just wanted to kind of point that out to make sure that you are aware of that. So let's take a quick look at the pricing page. So this is over at B&H Photo. Um, if you do want to buy one of these, then please do use the affiliate link down below. I'd appreciate that. At $3,500, this is not a cheap box. But as you're going to see from what it can do, it is worth every stinking penny of it. It is very powerful and it can do a lot more than you might think. It is not just about, oh, let's just get our, our stuff online. There are boxes that you can spend a lot less money if you just want to take a camera and get it up online. In fact, Epifan makes one. The Webcaster X2, small, tiny little box. I think it's $300, maybe $350, I think $300. And you could plug your GH5, your Canon camera, whatever, directly into that, hit go, and you're online with that one camera. That's super basic level. This takes it way beyond that, way beyond that. So let's see what all we've got. Uh, oh, on the front of this too, let's take a quick look down here. You have your SD card for recording, so you can record your content onto SD card. There's also a USB port right here, so you can plug in a thumb drive to record to. And there's a headphone jack on the front of there for monitoring. So that's that. Let's, I had this so nicely in place before I moved it. There we go. So that's, that's the configuration of the ports on there. So a bunch of ports on the back for input, recording on the front, and headphone monitoring. Everything else is handled by this touchscreen interface right here. So just to give you a quick little tour of the touchscreen interface, again, this is totally factory default right now. If I tap on the gear menu, it's going to show me a variety of options in here. One of the first things you'll do, and this is in the manual when you first open it, there's a big card on there that says plug it in, turn it on, turn on system status. It gives you an IP address right here. And then we need to punch that IP address into our computer to access it. You can do network configuration from here. By default, it's running DHCP. If I wanted to go in and set up a static IP address, I could do all that. Um, you can even load network presets. So if you are swapping between locations, you're, let's say you're broadcasting from your studio some days and you're on some other location others, you can save all these presets and load them at a touch of a button, which is awesome. Um, incidentally, for the chat, I am probably going to bring up the chat a little bit more during the live show today than I normally would, just because there's going to be so much to talk about. Burns is pointing out that for the price, it beats anything of the buying a Mac or building a streaming PC will get you. And this is, this is true. Because of the number of inputs that you have on here, and because of the quality of the streaming encoding that you get, you have dedicated hardware that this is what it does, is it encodes and streams. It really is a value. By the time you started piecing this all together from spare parts to build your own, you would easily spend this much money. You can spend less. I, I, this is the part that I want. To, I think is important to make clear. You can spend less to get online, but you probably can't spend less. You will most likely have to spend more to do this at this quality with all these features and get online. So that's a really important differentiation. If you're thinking, oh, I can just use Wirecast on my Mac, yes, you can, but you have to buy all the inputs, um, all the interfaces to input into that computer. You have to pay for the Mac itself. And you're going, well, I already have that. True, but you still need to have the computer, plus the software encoding that comes off that is nowhere near the quality of this. Um, and there's a lot of other things that go on as well. So just wanted to point that out. Thank you, Burns, for bringing that up. That is a very important point. Daniel Vicino is asking, is it possible to use the three inputs at the same time? Yes, it is. That is one of the other selling points on this. I've done a little bit of competitive analysis. Um, I, don't, I don't have a full-on comprehensive. I know that the company Epifan is doing some, and they'll probably publish those on their website at some point, um, if they're not already. But I was looking at some of the competition who do have, who may have three ports, but only two of them can be used simultaneously. This one, all three ports can be used simultaneously, all three inputs. So that in itself is a big, uh, a big upgrade. Okay, let's, uh, let's get this set up here. So I'm going to go back to my computer. I look at my IP address was uh, 1001 dot 20 slash admin will bring us there. Uh, the first time you go, it's going to ask you to log in. It is going to bring up a just a standard like, you know, admin login password. Admins the login, no password to get in. You can obviously change all that. But in case you're watching this and you somehow lost a little piece of paper, IP address slash admin gets you in. Admin is the login. That's it. All right, let's take a look at what we've got in here. So this is what I was talking about. The interface is, is not necessarily pretty, but it is very effective. A uh, long list down the left of all of the settings that we have in here. And then obviously on the right-hand side, we're going to see everything that we can set up. 
I'll make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to shrink and, and grow the text as we go here, just depending on what I'm doing. Make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, let's just, I'm going to do a quick run top to bottom, and then we'll go through the ones that I really want to focus on today. So first of all, your channels. Right now, by default, it's set up with an HDMI and HDMI B, HDMI A and HDMI B channel. And what a channel means is think of a channel like a show. This could be a show going to YouTube, going to Facebook, going to Twitch, uh, going out to a projector, going in just re being recorded. It could be anywhere, but this is your show or program is probably a better term for that. Within that program, in their words, the channel, within that channel, you have multiple layouts, you have multiple audio setups, you have everything that goes into making that show, making that program is all built within a channel. You can have multiple channels and that is really key part of this as well. And so we're gonna see how, see how that whole thing goes as we go here. Um, recorders, you can record the show obviously, you can record each channel individually, and then from here you can record multiple channels simultaneously and we will spend some time in there. You have your inputs, by default, HDMI A and B and SDI, and then there's all your audio. Each one of these has its own configuration settings. I click on one and it shows me what's in use, what it's receiving, and so on. We don't have anything plugged in right now, so input's zero, uh, but everything that's plugged in shows up in here. Your HDMI out port, oh, I may have skipped that actually. Let's, uh, did I skip that one? I kind of flew by these ports. Uh, there's the HDMI out port, so that HDMI out port can be used to monitor. It can be also be used to send a signal out to a projector uh, or just about anything else you'd want to. It's just HDMI out, and you can choose what you want to go out to it. Then uh, your basic configuration. So there's all kinds of stuff in here. We'll poke around in some of these, but these are basically all the different settings that you have access to. So let's start with the basic channel. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to delete the channels that are here. I'm going to go to HDMI B, delete this channel, get rid of it and HDMI A, and we're gonna delete this channel. I wanna start completely, completely from scratch. We have absolutely nothing on here. So there's nothing, nothing to look at yet. We're gonna start from scratch. We are going to first plug in a camera because I think it's probably a good place to start. Uh, Burns is pointing out a simple, clean, and straightforward web interface, nothing worse than everything being a huge cluster or something and endless submenus just to find the options and settings. This is true. It is a clean layout clean layout in there. Um, hey, by the way, guys, I want to just, before we go any farther, remind you that here on this show, we do follow a value for value model. That means that if you find that you have taken value from today's show, we would most certainly appreciate you putting a little bit of value back. If you head over to photojoseph.com support, you can learn all the different ways that you can provide value to the show. One of the ways I haven't listed on here yet, I need to do a new card, but one of the things that we're doing is a paid membership on photojoseph.com that gives you access to the live training that I do for a bunch of software. Plus, we're gonna be starting a new business of the business program where we're gonna be talking about the business of photography, cinematography, the filmmaking industry, uh, live streaming, YouTube channels, and so on, the, the business aspect of it. We're gonna talk about that, and that's gonna be a program that'll be coming up that will be available for, uh, for paid members at photojoseph.com. So please do, figure, do, please do check that out, photojoseph.com support to learn all about that. Okay. So we've got on here uh, nothing plugged in yet. I have a couple of HDMI cables. They are plugged in, but not plugged into anything. I'm going to take one of these and plug it into a GH5 with a microphone on it. There's a good reason for that. I'm gonna plug this in. And this camera is currently set to uh, 1080p 2997. So that's what this camera is set to. So now that that's on there, let's go. I went to load up my channels and uh, of course I just deleted them all. So it says, hey dummy, there's no channels in there. So let's go over to my Mac and I'm going to add a channel. And remember what I said, a channel is not just a camera, a channel is essentially an entire show. But we're gonna start really simple, put this one camera on the air. So go back to here and I can name the channel. We're gonna call this, uh, let's call this YouTube because this, this is eventually gonna be our YouTube show. And I can go, I've got my first layout, I can rename that layout if I want to, we'll call this camera one. And I scroll down here and there's my, let me zoom this out a little bit. There's my layout, you can see I've got absolutely nothing going on there. So I go down and I add an item, add a new item, video, picture or text. We're gonna go video source. Over here, I can choose what video source it is. I'm gonna do HDMI A. As soon as I do that, it's, what did I go? I probably plugged it into B. That's very clever. Let's plug it into B. There we go, I plugged it into B. So there's HDMI B. I can see that this is not filling the whole screen in here. By the way, you are not seeing a live feedback on here. This is just a still frame that it grabs, but that is the live feed. Let's resize that out to fill the whole screen. And then very, very important, this is one of those really easy first time user mistakes to make. You go, you set up your channel, you turn on the video and you're like, I'm not hearing anything. Where's my audio? You have to enable the audio separately. And there's a very good reason for this. Now, if I had used, if I had just left the default settings up there of HDMI and HDMI B turned on for the channels, the audio is already turned on, but I wanted to show you this from scratch. So 
we have added the video source, now we need to add the audio as well. And in this case, audio is also going to be coming out of HDMI B. The reason that this is separate, super, super important reason this is separate, is because let's say I'm using this camera with this microphone, and this is my main mic. That's the mic that I want to hear. I don't care whether I'm on camera A, camera B, on my computer, on something else. I want to hear this microphone. So I have separate control of what audio is being used over what's video is being used. I can set it up so that as I switch sources, it switches audio too. I can set it up so that this audio is always on, and let's say computer audio is only on when the computer's on. I can do that, but I have total separate control of it. So I go in here and I say, that I want HDMI B audio to be on here, HDMI B video is on, and that's it. I hit save on that, and that is all there is to it. If we look at the interface itself, we are now seeing it, and there is that live view. So that is this camera. Ooh, how meta is that? There's this camera pointing at that. This is the interface that I've just set up, and that's all there is to it. You can see my audio level meters in here. I can see it's a little bit on the high side, um, but that, let's actually, let's turn my mic down. What a good idea, there we go. Turn my mic down, and the audios are gonna be better. And that's it. So that is the first channel. I have now created, essentially, everything I need to go live. I could, I could now set up my streaming and encoding settings and go. Well, we're going to do a little bit more on that. So let's go back in here and let's set up a second channel. So that's camera one. Let's add another layout in here. We're going to call this one camera two. And camera two is going to be add new item, video source. Let's go in and we'll choose HDMI A this time. I know I, I reversed them and I haven't plugged a camera into that yet. That's okay. We're gonna choose HDMI A audio, and oops, let's uh, make this nice and big. Actually, I'm going to HDMI A audio and HDMI B, so make sure I get my audio from my main source plus whatever comes in off of this source. In fact, you know what? I'm not gonna do A. Let's turn that off because I'm gonna plug in a camera. So we hit save. There's still nothing coming in. That is okay because we haven't set it up yet. Let's go back to the overhead view here, and you'll see here as I look at my layouts, I have two different layouts here. Now this is my switcher. Now that I've set up two different layouts within this channel, this is how I would switch between them. Now camera two is not turned on yet, so let's go ahead and plug in camera two. So let's find that. And we're gonna take camera two here, GH5S, and we're gonna plug this thing in. Now this camera is set to 1080p 2398. So we've got a different frequency, same frame size, but different frame rate coming in on this camera. Set that up as a nice wide view, set that down next to it. And you can see on here, if we look at the overhead view, you can see the two different cameras there. So now if I wanna switch cameras, I simply load up camera two and apply that, and that's what's live. So let's go, let's see here, how can I do this a little bit better? I'm trying to get something a little bit more interesting. Let's, uh, here, we're, we're going to, oh there, we'll look at the lamp, how, how's that? The lamp is gonna be a very exciting component of the show today. So there, that lamp is a very important part of today's program. So we're gonna make sure we stay focused on that. Let's, let's go a little wider there. There we go, focused on the lamp there. So I can switch between camera one and camera two, just select it, hit apply, and that loads it up. Select that, hit apply, and it loads that up. And that is whatever live there is what is going to be streamed, recorded, or whatever it is that you're doing. So that's, that's it. We have just set up two, two sources, super easy. But now let's go back into the layouts and let's play with the layouts and let's do uh, like a picture in picture, split screen, side by side kind of a thing, because we can do that too. So go back in here. Um, notice that it hasn't updated this screen yet. If I kind of click away and come back to it, it's gonna update. We're gonna see a preview of that channel and that's good. So let's do another layout. Let's add a new layout here and we're gonna call this um, split, split, there we go. And on the split screen, we're gonna add both of these cameras. So add a source, go in here and choose video A, and then we're gonna add another item, add another source, and that's gonna be video B. And we can put these side by side if I wanted to. Um, we'll, we'll do some more things in a moment with them. I will turn on audio from camera B, because that's where my good audio is coming from. And there is now a third layout with the two pictures side by side. So let's just start with this and we save that go back to the overhead view, and we see it's already shown up over here. So there's my split view if I wanna apply that. And if I wanna see this bigger, I can just tap on that. We can see the whole thing bigger. I can get rid of the interface on there as well, um, or just go back to the switcher. So th the point of this whole interface here, other than obviously I can control things, I can do all of my live switching here. If I'm on air myself and I wanna do my own live switching, I can do it from here. For those of you who've watched the show before, you know that I do, for what I'm doing right now, all of my live switching through an iPad interface, which a bunch of buttons, a bunch of clicky buttons, and I often, <laughs> for any regular of the show, uh, any regular viewer of the show knows that I often hit the wrong preset because I am simultaneously trying to remember what color I'm going for and the button placement and read the text and hit the right button. This is so much easier because I can see exactly what it is. I know exactly what switch I'd be going to. So. 
this is really, really nice. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to do the switching yourself. Obviously, somebody else could be doing it for you. Um, I'll show you later. You can do all this through a computer interface as well, but you have in front of you this nice big touchscreen to do all of the switching. Hey, folks, this turned out to be a pretty long video, so I've split it up into three different parts. You can watch part two right here.